Hey everyone, it's Sharon with Cozy Junk Studio. We're gonna be doing some more traditional Christmas items today. We're gonna to be using some Hobby Lobby wood items, some Timu wood items. We're gonna be using some thrift store items. All of these items can be gifted or used in your own home as well as sold. I'm gonna be putting pretty much all of these items in my antique booths in Hickory and Hudson, North Carolina. With that being said, let's get on into this video. This first project is a pack of blank wood ornaments that I got from Hobby Lobby. It was actually in the back of the store, like where the Christmas paper and um, Christmas craft supplies were at. I'm pretty sure these were 99 cents or less. They were half off. So we're gonna be using some of these colors I'm showing you here on the screen. I did go ahead and paint these and seal them before I am starting to use the Holly Glenn IOD transfer pack. Now, if you guys do the math on this transfer pack, each piece comes to 55 cents per transfer. There are 38 pieces in this pack. So they are very cost effective if you break them down per project. Now, these small pieces at 55 cents is a great deal. However, there are some that are large as a page. So I cannot stress enough how reasonable these products are if you do the math breaking them down. I painted six ornaments at the colors, two in black, two in red, and two in the I think it was the Fancy Farm Girl or Aviary Green. You saw the colors at the beginning of the video. And I'm just using some of the little animals to put on each one of these. Once I get the transfers on, I'm gonna go ahead and sand around the edges to give it a little bit of a rustic look, bringing some of that wood back through. I did paint the backs of these as well. I wanted to go ahead and finish them off in case you could see them through the Christmas tree or anything someone decides to hang these off of because I am selling these. After I go ahead and distress the edges of these, I'm going to seal them. We will do something to the top of the ornament where the string will hang from or the ornament hanger will hang from. Coming up. I didn't do all of these on camera because it was very repetitive and I just didn't feel like you guys would probably want to see that. Now I decided to use my, it's like a copper color, it's called bronze from, oh, I can't read that. But anyways, the, I, the ink pad is right there just to cover this because I discovered in my last video that an ink pad is great for quick work versus a ton of brush strokes and getting paint out and dirtying a paintbrush. And it worked perfect, you all. It soaked up into that wood and you couldn't even tell that it used to be wood. So I thought that the copper color would be really cute over gold. I love gold and I do use a lot of gold, but I thought we would do copper in this one. And then I got the great idea to add some rub and buff to this to give it a golden coppery look. I love how these turned out, especially the black. You know, I'm a sucker for black. I love it. It's one of my favorite colors. You all have to let me know in the comment section below what you think about these. I really wanted to add something else to these, but I didn't want to bulk them up with, you know, flowers. Uh, so I thought that I would just add a clean, simple bow to the top. And I had this striped like grow grain. Mm, I don't know if it's grow grain, but this Hobby Lobby red and then this green color of ribbon. And I got this uh, tan, not tan, but cream color with a gold thread through it twine from Hobby Lobby when I was there in the Christmas section. It was really reasonable. So I tied that around to hold the ornament and then added a bow. Uh, I just did three green and three red and then split it up between the opposite colors for these. And I do use hot glue for this. I felt like hot glue was perfect for this uh, and that it stuck to the wood very good. I 
I thought we would do a jar. So I got out this apothecary looking jar. I painted it originally white and I went back and painted it black and then left the white on the front because I want to put this cool Santa from the IOD Candy Cane Cottage transfer book. Again, this one is very inexpensive per transfer. I know there are still some of these transfer books on Etsy. I did see them. They are a little bit more expensive, but not too bad. I'm using this Fusion Antiquing Glaze to tone this white back. Now I did go back with some black paint and you'll see I did get a big smear there with the antiquing glaze because I made the black or the white, um, I put black paint around the white to make it more of a um, halo around Santa, but I didn't really care that it smeared it a little bit because I was trying to tone that black back or that white back and it worked out really good. Now that antiquing glaze, I just used a little and now I'm gonna go ahead and seal my sides and back which really I didn't need to at this point because we're gonna be using this gold alcohol ink. I loved the last time we did this with ornaments. So we're gonna do the same thing on this bottle to tone that black back and kind of blend in with our little Santa. And while I was doing this, I was thinking about how we did those ornaments, adding the baby powder in with that. So I went ahead and grabbed that and mixed it in with the gold and gave more texture to this bottle. I know a lot of these bottles, people will use napkins and add a lot of texture. So I thought, why not add some texture to this one? And it's so fun doing that. You all love to make messes. You know I do, and I love to experiment. And honestly, it's just a cheap bottle. If it goes bad, I can paint over it. And if I can't paint over it, I mean, I can always throw it away. I just don't stress too much about being, well, anyways, I just don't stress too much about it. It's just small things that don't cost that much. Now, I did take that gold um, and go kind of around the white to blend that in a little bit more too and to get some of that white tone back for our Santa. And coming up, we're getting ready to use that baby powder to add, you know, texture to this. I just started adding it on the bottle at this point and it really toned down the gold too. I don't know, the whole thing just was so much fun. Now I will tell you this, the gold ten tended to make the, um, or the baby powder tended to make the gold really thick and blend in and not leave as much black showing, which I, I still really liked. So you guys have to let me know, do you like doing stuff like this? Just, you know, fly by the seat of your pants. Don't really get too concerned with it because, you know, it's not, it's just crafting. Once we get finished with that gold, we're going to go ahead and antique the gold even more. <laughs> I know we have toned back the black. Now we're going to tone back the gold. We're going to be using the DIY dark and decrepit, I think in black or the dark, either way, Either one of those is going to tone this black, um, this gold back and blend it in really well with what black has uh, been left showing. Now that we finished that, I had made up some of these IOD Holly Lane mold holly uh, with the holly berries and i'd use the uh, amazing casting resin i'd made these up in advance and i painted them with the fancy farm girl green in diy uh, paint so now i'm just taking my heat gun you can a lot of people will pop these in the microwave and just heat them up real quick so you can bend them i just use my heat gun because i'm just sitting at my desk and i don't really want to get up and go to the microwave but you can do that and now i'm just using some wood glue to attach these i love this dollar tree wood glue it's amazing i also like the type bond quick and thick it grabs on really quick i didn't have it i just had the wood glue sitting here so I'll just grab what was here. I do love the uh, quick and thick better for molds. Okay, and then I just spread it around and when my mold is heated up, I kind of hold it in place, especially on a curved surface, so it'll stick to it or stay tacked to it or just use some paper tape or painter's tape to hold it in place until it keeps that round shape or the curved shape. I started adding this 
same ribbon that we used on those other ornaments to the top of this because I want to put just a little messy bow and really make this decorative and festive for the holiday season. And I'm just going to be using hot glue and wood glue to attach this. I'm just putting it around it for now and then I'll make my messy bow separately. Okay, so that was a sidetrack, just FYI, to show you how my brain works. Uh, now I'm moving back to my mold. Y'all, I don't know why I stopped and did that. I think I saw the ribbon laying there and got the idea and then started it and thought, okay, finish the other part. So now I'm just taking my rub and buff and a brush because what we're going to do is we're going to pull that gold up from the bottle onto our mold. I was going to use a rub and buff anyways to highlight some gold on these pieces, but I thought why not just, you know, bring it up from the bottle. That'll blend the mold in with the bottle as well. And then once we get all those sides done a little bit, we'll add some to the top. We're going to go ahead and add some of this marquee, which I did. It's the DIY marquee. I did add a little bit of gray to this to tone the red back some and to make it darker. It was actually the... Um, old school it's like a gray color and I'm just gonna paint the berries red right here and then I think we do add some rub and buff to them as well when you are doing several different colors on pieces like this meaning the mold don't get too stressed out about getting red on the green or green on the red because you can go back in with the green and touch that up a little bit or you can cover a lot of those areas with the gold rub and buff. I think people get really hung up and you'll see right here I'm doing that. I'm just going back in and I get green on those berries, but it's not that big of a deal because for one, you can use the rub and buff to blend those colors in and you won't even be able to see that you got the green on the red or the red on the green. Really, you know, you just try not to stress too much over that kind of thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in with a little bit of white and highlight these berries, like give them like they're a little shiny or maybe they have a little snow on them. Okay, so I came in very close so you could see me take that gold rub and buff and cover where the red and the green were just not looking so great. See how easy that was? And it looks good, or at least I think it looks good. You guys have to let me know what you think about this one. I haven't done a jar like this before, I don't think, with you all. And I don't do many of these, but I'm getting excited about doing an upcoming video of free things to use to make stuff with. So this is kind of a starter. This one wasn't free. I think I paid $2. But we're going to be using some pickle jars and some cans, so that'll be fun. I hadn't sealed that yet, so now I'm just sealing it with that same polycrylic. And then we're gonna go ahead and add uh, some of that rub and buff around the lip of my uh, jar because I hadn't done that. I really hadn't thought about it and I didn't use the black paint or the gold. I did go down the jar a little bit inside with the black paint just so, you know, it looked kinda um, cohesive. Plus I'd painted the jar white before and I didn't want the white showing at the top on the inside. Now I'm just gonna add this little bow I made out of a bunch of different little ribbons I had. I'm gluing it on and I'm gonna take a couple of the pieces and put hot glue behind them and attach them to the ribbon that's going around the jar just so it'll have you know a little bit of difference and texture added, not, not just sticking completely out from the jar. I went through my stash and found a couple of little tiny acorns. I found a huge box of them. I told you all before, I think, but year before last for like $4.99 and there was, I don't know how, it was probably a few hundred and they're so tiny. So I added two just with hot glue to give it a little bit more festive look to it. And I think that's the end of this piece. I really enjoyed making this bottle. You all have to let me know what you think about it in the comments below. This next one is going to be a wreath makeover. I'm showing you, I had two of these. I just showed you the one with those red velvety looking pine cones. I took all of that stuff off of this wreath to start with a clean slate. Once I took everything off, I went ahead and took all of the branches and made them kind of go around in a circle. 
you know how a lot of the new wreaths kind of have this swirl look where all the branches go one way all the way around so i thought that might help update this and we're going to be using some of the ornaments that we made in the last video and we're gonna make a deer wreath. Oh, I'm so excited about this one. I went through my stash and found some things that looked related to deer and of course that are deer. And I have these two ornaments from the Dollar Tree. So last year I covered these with plaster or spackling because I wanted to give them some texture and I never did use them. Well, I painted them with black chalk paint and now I'm going over them with some gold rub and buff. I do end up going over these with a couple different colors, the rub and buff, uh, once I pull out some other things and the gold needed to match a little better. I have this green plastic deer and I'm not sure where it came from, but I'm going to go ahead and paint it this sort of chocolate color in the Americana Deco Art paint. Once that dried, I went ahead and added some gold rub and buff just to bring out that texture in its fur. And what I'm going to do next is I am pre-planning. I'm just adding some ornaments and things where I think I might want them to go. And I'm going to do that across the whole wreath. Then go back in with some hot glue and some florist wire to place the items where I want them. Once I got those placed and glued in, I went ahead and added some more Christmas or winter greenery in to help update this wreath to give it a more updated look as well. You guys will have to let me know what you think of this in the comment section below. I love how this updated it. I thought about adding some ribbon, but for some reason I just didn't think ribbon looked right on this. For this next project, we're going to be using these Christmas trees that came in a pack. In the same section, I got the blank Christmas ornaments. These have a wood distressed finish on them, so we're just going to use that as our background. I'm not going to paint these. I thought they would look great with the Holly Glen transfer from IOD. I'm just going to be picking some of these smaller images and just putting it straight onto the wood. It's, it went on fine. I was not concerned really with these transfers. You want to start with a surface that is um, not dry like a piece of dry wood, but these had a coating on them and so they transferred just fine. What I'm doing is once I get these on there, I'm going to sand the excess off and going over a little bit of the transfer to give it a little bit of a distressed look as well. We are going to finish these off with a thin coat of Big Top by DIY and one of each of those are going to get a straw or raffia bow with that black button from the Dollar Tree. Let me know what you think of these in the comments below. Our next project is a Dollar Tree, uh, I'm calling it an upcycle because we're going to be 
changing what's on here. Now these signs are really, really cute, but they are so fun to redo. And I have just painted over this paper, but I thought that I would try and remove it this time. I've never done that, so I thought I would see what that was like. Either way is fine. Painting over it, I never had any problem with bubbling or anything the last time. And as soon as I put the fall one that I did with the pumpkins on it, it sold in my booth. So I'm going to make a couple of these over with Christmas. I started out painting this white with some chalk paint, and then I ended up going a different way. I decided that I was going to use some of these Holly Glenn transfers and some Christmas music. So I went ahead and got some of my vintage Christmas, not Christmas music, just regular music. And I'm using this uh, Carriage House green paint. We're going to use that on one and we're going to use the music on the other two as a background for the transfers. These transfers can go over top of a lot of different things, including paint, music, or I'm sorry, papers, uh, fabric. There's just so many things you can use these on. Now, I love to use a glue stick, especially a really good one when it comes to certain decoupaging, and this is perfect. This glue stick is my favorite. It's the Recollections glue stick. I'm going to use it and then put the paper straight over it and smooth it out. We're going to go ahead and sand those edges to get the excess off and then add our transfer. Once we get those transfers on, we will seal those with a top coat. We're also going to use some stencils that I ordered from Timu. There was such a huge set. You can see those in my Timu haul on my channel. I went ahead and picked out one of the sayings and or the quotes. And now I'm just showing you a few of those that came with the set, but it was a big stack of them. We're going to go ahead and use some DIY paint in the color crinoline. I love this color. It's just a beautiful off-white, very creamy. I'm going to stencil this uh, on, and then once I take it off, I don't like the little lines that kind of cut marks in the words or the text. So I go ahead and take a tiny brush and just go over the whole stencil areas that have that to make it look a little bit smoother. I do go look. ahead and use some Rub and Buff Gold to go around the edges of these. I just love the way that it looks. You don't have to use this. I tend to use it on a lot of things that I love, but I think it just gives a little bit more of a high-end look and just brings out a little sparkle without glitter. Let me know what you think about this one. And do you make these over these little three-piece circles from the Dollar Tree? Our next project is definitely an upcycle from a thrifted find. I paid $2 for this box. It is just a paper mache box or paper cardboard box. Now, I'm not sure if this was factory finish or someone painted this and then didn't complete it. I, you know, I really don't know. It does have a cool look and a crackle effect on it. However, it is chipping off and we're going to fix that later on. We're going to go ahead and start using some pre-made IOD molds. I have this frame from one of their frames molds. They only have two. This is one of the larger ones. I am painting it prairie gray and I'm going to be using it on what I'm going to be calling the front of this box. We're also going to be using one of the transfers from that Christmas Cottage IOD um, transfer pack. It's a uh, Santa Claus. There are uh, some other molds that we're going to be using on this, including the holly that we used in on the bottle from the earlier project. Right now, I'm just trying to size up to see where my Santa is going to fit and how my frame needs to fit with the lid on the box. Now this looks like a little torn book page and there will be some white showing, but I'll show you how we fix that later on in the video. We're going to go ahead and get this transfer put down so that we can add the frame to it. We're going to be using the same process of heating up the mold to make it form to the box and use some hot glue and the wood glue as well to get it to stick to the box. I'm going to be adding another piece or another mold on the edge of the lid that it come from the uh, keys or keyhole, key, keyhole mold. 
uh, IOD mold. I'm doing the same process to get it to adhere to the top of the box as well or to the edge lid lid edge of the box. Now that we have our molds on there I'm going to go ahead and give this a very light almost sheer coat in some places of Sandy Blonde DIY. I'm thinning it down a little bit with water because I'm almost at the end of this jar of paint. I'm going to go back over this with the dark wax from DIY to get those crackles to show back through and they actually are texture that you can feel. So that dark wax is going to go nicely down in those. But before I do that, I will seal this sandy blonde in with a light coat of polyacrylic or polycrylic. I lost a little bit of my footage, but I did want to put a handle on the top of this lid or a knob. So I dug through my metal stash and found this knob and this piece that's underneath the knob, like a plate. They don't, they didn't come together, but they match perfectly. And I love how it brought this piece to a whole other level. Here is the dark wax. We're putting that on there and it really brings those crackles back out. I love how this piece looks so vintage and just has that beautiful crackle effect with the two tones. You guys will have to let me know what you think about this. If you like the wax on there and the very vintage antique look that it gives it. I did add it to the molds and I added it all around the Santa so that it would age it and give it a little bit of that hue color as well. We are going to do my favorite thing by adding that gold wax onto the molds and around the edges of the lid and even the knob on top. Now, if you look at my painted molds, you can see where I got some of that paint on the green holly and on the red berries, but don't fret. We're going to be fixing that with this rub and buff gold because it's going to be going over a lot of those uh, little mistakes or areas that got uh, the wrong color of paint on them. You all will have to let me know what you think about this one in the comments below and which one is your favorite so far. Our next project is from a previous thrift and we had two packs of these wood houses that came three to a pack, total of six for $3. We used some for our ghosts during our Halloween video and now we're going to use some more for this Holly Glen transfer from IOD. I have went ahead and painted the houses in the Carnival Red and the Fancy Farm Girl from DIY. I've let those dry and now we're going to go ahead and add our transfers.
Once we get those added, we're going to go ahead and sand around the edges to give them a little bit of a distressed look and seal them with the polycrylic top coat. Once we seal them with that top coat, I will let that dry and go back in with some DIY dark wax. It just gives it a little bit of a vintage look. I do wipe a lot of it back because the top coat will let me do that, but it also tones down the shine from the top coat. The polycrylic does have a little bit of a gloss shine and it really was very glossy on here. I'm assuming because of the transfer. So that dark wax just really toned that gloss back. If you have something that's glossy, use wax on it to tone down the gloss or go back over it with a clear matte sealer in spray or even just brush on. And you all can probably guess what the last part of this is going to be. We're going to use that rub and buff to go around the edges of these and change the color of that cute little silver chimney. It is a um, hammered, um, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's a silver and I want it to be gold. So we're just going to brush that on the outside, some of the inside, and use that on the edges and a little bit around the front of these designs to give them a little bit of a Christmassy glitz. Now you all have to let me know if you like these. Also, if you like this video, subscribe to my channel. If you're not subscribed, it doesn't cost you anything. Ring that bell so you'll be notified every time I bring out a new video. Hit that like button. It helps my channel. And when you comment, not only does it help my channel, it gives me a chance to talk to you all. I also have an Instagram and a Facebook page. If you want to go over and join those, I would appreciate it. I will see you in the next video.